kuunda Korea tumeleta bodaboda yenye wewe uwezi hiyo Here are today's top stories in our What in the World segment. Number 1, Dr. Magari Gikenyi has gone to court seeking to now compel churches to pay tax like all other taxpayers. And I would like to say that even in America which is the epicenter of immorality, they don't make churches or mosques pay for that matter. However, I will not be shocked if we find the biggest court of the land, the Supreme Court of Kenya, forcing churches to pay taxes because our judicial officers are our weak link apparently. Former Chief Justice Willie Mutunga is calling for LGBTQ conversation. Martha Kome under her watch has allowed the same group to be registered as a human rights group in Kenya. And that's mainly so that they can attract funding from the West. They are not even being genuine. It's all about money for them. The same Chief Justice has also called for legalization of prostitution. So why should I be shocked if the learned fellows approve the taxation of churches? It is wrong, but I can't rule it out. They might just do it. Second story of the day. Much as Kenya Kwanza has policies that look good on paper, I would urge Kenya Kwanza leaders to be very, very picky in regards to which of those policies they decide to present to Kenyans in their speeches. Because some have very low approval ratings and are not even worth talking about. For example, I'll play you a video of Bonnie Halwale explaining to Kenyans how they should be happy because they have brought electric bikes to save them from the high cost of living. Just have a look at their reactions. Here's the tip. So none of the youths bought that. Again, look at the reaction from residents in Kiambu as the housing project was being implemented. Roll the tip. Although the disparity in Kiambu is that the project was touching on people's personal lands and so on and so forth. But either way, that shows that most of these projects have very low approval ratings and if you're going to be sticking your head out of a vehicle to speak, unless you're the president or the deputy president because it's very hard for that duo to be heckled anywhere, don't dare bring up these things, I would dare say. Third story of the day, the Republic of Rwanda has officially recalled substandard goods from Kenya. And these are not just any substandard goods, these are pharmaceuticals, drugs that are not of good quality. Let me read you the document from uh, the Rwandan authorities and I quote. So this is from Rwanda Food and Drug Authority. I'll start you off from paragraph 2. Reference is also made to the letter with reference number yada yada by Universal Corporation Limited notifying the recall of fluconzole 200 milligram due to discoloration of tablets. Further reference is made to the investigation performed by Rwanda FDA which confirmed that some incriminated batches were imported into Rwanda. It is with this background that Rwanda FDA recalls from the Rwandan market the following batches of fluconazole 200 milligram tablets. There you can see the various batches have been uh, labeled there. The manufacturer is Universal Corporation Limited, which is based in Kenya. Now, when you look at the issues on the far right, you'll see number one, the pink tablets displayed white discoloration, so on and so forth, all the way till the bottom. All those batches had issues. And there were four batches, 315, 316, 390, and 022. And slightly below, you can see there's instruction that they should be returned to their suppliers for proper management. And also, this suppliers have been requested to appear before the Rwandan FDA within 10 days from the date of publication of this recall. 
to go and explain themselves and take into account why they are sending low quality pharmaceuticals into the state of Rwanda. No much as people say Kagame is a dictator because that really is what he is, uh, I will say on this one he's right because you can't joke with meds. Medicare is very expensive because you know the moment you bring in low-grade pharmaceuticals. There are people who are living on insurance. And in fact, they have low insurance covers. So you are having a cover of just 10,000 shillings. And you go pay consultation, that's two grand gone, a few tests here and there, and then you're left with 3,000 for meds, which is just enough to get you back on track as far as your health is concerned. And then you go consume meds, which are not of good standard. So on this end, I think the Rwandans are okay, but the manufacturers who are alleged to be based in Kenya need to pull up their socks. And I hope they're not giving us the same substandard goods right here in Kenya. The Ministry of Health should be looking into that closely. Now, either way, that's just my opinion, guys. Those are the three topics that I had for you today. If there's any topic you feel I left out and ought to feature in our next What in the World segment, just do drop me your comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. And in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula, hit the subscribe button, you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.